Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Chelsea. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up or commenting below. If you want to see more of my videos, press the subscribe button and click on the bell for notifications. If you need any Stampin' Up! products to make these cards, you can visit my online store and the link is in the description box below. When you purchase Stampin' Up! products through me, you can earn free products. Check out my current customer appreciation products on my blog and the link is listed below in the description. Today I'd like to share with you my second alternative card ideas using the September 2021 Paper Pumpkin Kit. And this fun kit created 12 treat boxes. And here are the treat boxes. Whoops. They come in a variety of fun colors. And this one you can even turn into a fun pumpkin, Halloween pumpkin. So if you're interested in seeing how me unbox this kit or some of my other alternative cards, you can click on the link in the top right corner. So today we're going to be doing some fun techniques with the stamps from the kit, as well as using some of the pieces in unique ways to create these cards. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to begin with stamping. And before I do that, I want to just show you the cute stamp set that came in the kit. It's got some really fun greetings. It's got great leaf images with both solid and aligned for some detail. And so today we're gonna to be using those images on our cards. So I'm gonna start with this card here and it has two leaves and they're stamped in the soft succulent and pumpkin pie. And to get that lighter color that we're using for the solid, stamped you're going to stamp off first and then stamp onto your cardstock and i'm going to go ahead and do this a couple times on the top and bottom of my square cardstock piece now you can always find the dimensions of the cardstock pieces i'm using down in the description below or on my blog let's see where's this one should go like that so just add a couple to the top and bottom, and then you're going to take the inside lined image and with full strength ink, you're gonna just add that to the center. And then with the other shape, we're going to use pumpkin pie ink, and we're gonna do the exact same technique. like that, and then add that inside shape with the full strength. And our piece should look something like this. Now for this card, we're also going to be doing the same on some of the die cut pieces. So in the kit, you're going to receive some of these soft succulent die cut pieces. And the nice thing is that the opposite side is white. And so we can stamp on that white side. And the images are symmetrical, so they do fit inside of that shape. So just kind of eyeball it and then stamp. And then the inside part. And then we'll do the same thing with our other leaf shape. Whoop, don't forget to stamp off. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. So for our second card, we're going to be doing those same techniques. We're just adding some extra colors. We've got a poppy parade red uh, leaf, and then we're going with a little darker soft succulent with a darker inside color. And we're going to be doing the images down from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So we'll begin again with our light soft succulent. Don't forget to stamp off before you stamp on. And this is just more random 
And so you're just going to start um, kind of dividing up your cardstock into some different areas where you can add those leaf shapes. So make sure you give enough space for more shapes as um, you're adding them. So then we'll go to the detailed lined. Next, let's go with our pumpkin pie. So I've put away my pumpkin pie ink and I've gotten out my poppy parade and I'm just going to do the same thing, stamp, ink it up and then stamp it um, off first and then on my paper. And if they overlap, that's okay. Don't let that worry you. And then the inside color with the full strength poppy parade. Then we're going to go with a full strength um, soft succulent leaf. Maybe just a couple like that. And then we'll use a darker color. For my original card, I used soft suede, but I think for this one, I want to use evening evergreen. And I'm just going to do that, um, do the lined image with that. There we go. So it will end up looking something like this when you're all done. So in your kit, you're also going to have these tags and we're going to stamp our greetings on these tags. And so I'm going to do both the greetings. I've got you're a blessing and they're going to both be stamped in the soft succulent color. If you want to change up your color, you're welcome to do that and use one of the other colors um, that you've stamped with. And then my second one is going to be thank you. Then with the you're a blessing, I'm going to take a pair of paper snips and just remove the tag, the top of the tag to give me a nice rectangle shape. So next I'm going to use some of the uh, sections from our uh, treat boxes for our cards. And so I am going to use, let's do this one here. So I'm just going to separate one section from the other like that. And then let's use one of these. And we're going to actually use two of these. So separate two. Okay, then put the other ones back. So we're gonna start by creating this shape here for our cards. And I have two of them. We're going to do the pale papaya and then the poppy parade. And the easiest way to do this is to take the round edge and you're just going to trace it onto the card stock. So you're going to line it up um, I like to do it on from the back side so I don't have to worry about any of the pencil markings showing. And you're just going to trace that along that edge and then flip it and trace it along the other. So if you're using one that already has the curve on it, then you don't need to trace both sides. You would just need to trace one side. And then use your pair of paper snips and just carefully cut along that edge or that tracing to create the edge. And then I'm going to use this one to do the same on this side. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Just you're looking for a nice curve to those sides. 
Okay, so those two pieces are done. And then we're going to do um, something similar that we did for my first alternative card for these two pieces here. We're going to turn them into rectangles. So I'm gonna begin with this one. And I'm just gonna start by placing that, that straight edge up against my paper trimmer. And then here in that corner, I'm just adding, placing that corner along the cut line and then trimming down and then flipping and trimming this off. And remember, we've talked about saving those curved pieces. So put that off to the side to save that. And then you'll trim again. These pieces that we're removing here, we're not gonna, you don't need to worry about saving those. And then cutting this right around that score line, like that. Okay, so now you've got a piece that's about an inch by around three inches. And we're going to just cut this in half now. So the easiest way i found to cut an irregular sized um, piece in half is to kind of even it out on both sides. So we don't really have to measure and do the math. I'm just looking for it to hit the same spot on both sides. And then you can cut. Okay, so I've got two small pieces and they're just under about a half an inch or so. And then we'll just repeat that with this section here. So we have two pieces. I do want this pale papaya to be smaller than this one. So I'm just gonna kind of measure, this one sits at about three inches and I want these ones to sit at about two and three fourths. Okay. So the last thing we need to do before we can put this card together is stamp this fun texture background. And we're using the same technique where we have stamped off and stamped on, and we're using soft succulent on some um, soft sea foam cardstock. And I'm using this uh, kind of a unique shape that came in the stamp set. I think it has kind of like a wood grain feeling to it. So you're just gonna stamp off and then stamp on. And you're, it is quite a lot of repetition. So just kind of, you're focusing on the edges um, of this cardstock. We don't need to worry about stamping this design um, in the center. So you're maybe going in about a half inch or so. Give it some variation so that the image isn't the same every time. You'll also notice that I am um, keeping the image going the same direction. Okay, so something like this will be perfect. Okay, so we are now ready to put our card together. I just have a card base of soft sea foam and I'm just gonna use a bone folder to make a nice crease. Then I have my, this piece is four inches. Whoops. I'm using the extra strong adhesive here and sometimes it does tear your cardstock. So just be really careful with that. So this piece I'm adding is four inches by five and a quarter. So it should fit in the center of our cardstock nicely. Then I've got my um, kind of my focal point piece here and we're going to add these strips to the top and bottom. So to do that, I'm just gonna place some adhesive along the edge, make sure that it's not sticking out, kind of fold it over. And then I'm just gonna start with the soft sea foam and add it evenly on this piece. And I want it to be about a fourth of an inch on both sides. So then I'm just using my grid paper to kind of help me identify the best place for it. And once that's there, I'm going to do the same thing with my pale papaya piece. Just kind of figure out where to place that using my grid paper. This time I want it to be just a little bit um, shorter, so maybe more of like an eighth of an inch peeking out than a full quarter of an inch. So something like that on that side. And I will show you what it looks like in just a minute. So make sure you're adding it so that the right color is facing the front. Something 
like that. Okay, so it will look like that when you're all done. And then this can get added to your the center of your card base with some dimensionals. And that just goes right in the center, just kind of eyeball where that should go. Then we've got our little tag. I don't know what to call that. It's kind of an oval shape. We're adding dimensionals to the back of that and placing it in the center, just kind of in this white space here that we've created. So next let's add our leaves and I've placed dimensionals on the back here and we're kind of just going to add them at some angles and then we're going to cover up the center with our greeting. So something like that. And then our greeting just gets a little adhesive in the center and you can place that at an angle. And then I have already tied a bow with 10 inches of linen thread. And if you're interested in seeing how to use linen thread um, and just a little couple tricks to get it to work better for you, you can um, click on that playlist up in the top right corner and it will take you to my first alternative where I also used linen thread and um, kind of give you some helpful tips. And then you're just gonna add that with a glue dot to the side of your tag to make it look like it's been tied. And that card is all done. I think it just has a really fun kind of foresty foliage feeling. And um, this background stamp is just a really good use um, of creating texture um, to that card as well. So let's go ahead and move on to card number two. So this is what it looks like. And we've got a card base of Poppy Parade this time, just to kind of highlight that beautiful red leaf that we've added. This card is a lot simpler. We're just going to add the layer on our stamped piece, which is four inches by five and a quarter, which will give us a nice border all the way around. Next, we're going to add our red section that we turned into kind of an oval or label. Place that with some dimensionals in the center. Somewhere like that. Then we've got our greeting that says, you're a blessing. Before we add this, we just, to our card, we want to add another little bow, nice big bow here. And that's just gonna go at an angle right on the end. Open it up so it feels nice and big. And then we can add dimensionals to the rest of that label. And that just goes right in the center. And that card is all done. You can see here that I've used the two different patterns of the Poppy Parade. And so you can kind of pick and choose which one you like. Well, thank you for joining me for my second alternative for Paper Pumpkin this month. If you're interested in getting written instructions or seeing close-up images of these cards, you can visit my blog, creativechelsea.com. If you're interested in getting your own subscription, please visit the link in the description box below to sign up. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day. Bye.